Hello and welcome to Patents TV. I'm your host Jeff Bond and today is a very special episode, episode number 50 of Patents TV. So we've been doing this for, for quite a while now, actually a little more than two years. Um, behind me you can see the little celebration that we have. And what I'd like to do is take a walk down memory lane. Hello, I'm Daniel McNulty, the Northeast Site Coordinator for the Patents Project and the Associate Director of Professional Development. And I'm Jeff Bond, the Patent Central Site Regional Coordinator. We'd like to welcome you to this introductory episode to the new video series from Patents called Patents TV. What we're going to do is every, every first and third Tuesdays of every month, we're going to have a live Patents TV uh, episode and we're going to look at free tips and tricks and low-cost resources and announcements. And you're welcome to tune in at 11.45 Eastern Standard Time on the first and third Tuesdays of each month to receive those. Uh, we're also welcoming any questions and comments and suggestions and ideas for future episodes. And we'll talk a little bit later about how you can send us those. What we're going to do today, uh, and also we're going to record these episodes, so if you're not able to tune in live on the first and third Tuesdays of each month, We'll record them and make them available on the Patents website. You'll just go to Patents and then Services and then go to our Video Collections uh, Library where you'd normally go to view any of our videos. What we're going to do today is look at uh, iBooks. I'm going to take you through iBooks and we'll do a few different things with the iBooks app on an iPad. And then Jeff's going to do a quick comparison for you of some electronic ink devices versus some LCD devices. We'll wrap up with a few announce announcements and we'll let you get back to your to your regular Tuesday. So I'm going to turn on my iPad here. Okay. So it's just my iPad 2 here and I'm going to go into the iBooks app. So iBooks, of course, is the app that either comes on your Apple devices or once in a while you have to download it. It doesn't necessarily come on your device when you first purchase it. The other thing with the matte finish or with the LCD is you've got to wipe it off to get those fingerprints off, and you don't have to do that with the with the um, e-ink. Okay, boy, 15 minutes went fast. Be sure to turn it tune in next time on April 3rd. Uh, Tuesday, April 3rd at 11.45 again, where we're going to talk some more about portable devices and uh, looking at formats for portable devices and doing some conversion between formats. Remember to go to our website and you can send us suggestions and ideas for future episodes as well. Send us a message with Patents TV in the subject line. Well, that was fun. Today is the third Tuesday of the month, which means it's our featured vendor presentation. And today's vendor presentation is Westminster Technologies Incorporated. And Westminster Technologies Incorporated is where we got our now um, here, a little robot that I had mentioned um, in our last episode we were going to bring out and at least introduce because we also picked a name for him. Um, the name is Ophi and it's basically taken from a word that means brill starfish. Uh, and I'm not the uh, marine biologist by any means, but Trust me, that's, that's where it came up from. So, um, and that co correlates with our little starfish that we have on a lot of the patents emblems and so forth. So that's, that's where we are with that. And now we've got a short clip from Dr. Raymond Hype with Westminster Technologies Incorporated. Hello, I'm now. I'm a humanoid robot imagined and manufactured by Aldebaran Robotics. My name is Olivier Joubert uh, and I'm working today for Aldebaran. I'm actually heading up the special education and mainstream education project for primary school. As now is a project that we started actually in 2011 and the main purpose of this project is to customize now the humanoid robot in a way that he can help children with autism in the classroom at learning new skills. At the very start, we never designed now to help in special education. However, uh, when we were at the trade show, we had two children just running towards now and starting to interact with now. What was kind of exceptional actually is that the mother of these two sons just came to us and she was obviously moved. 
And we learned from that that one of the children was autistic, and that was the first time that he was interacting like that with a third entity. Most children with autism are spontaneously attracted to technology, so they are drawn to interact with me. Thanks to my humanoid shape and my structured behavior, I can easily teach them useful social skills to interact with people in day-to-day -day life. When we are talking to someone, we are actually expressing a lot thanks to our facial features, facial emotion. When I'm smiling, when I'm happy, you understand it. The fact that Nao has a static face is kind of important because we just remove all this useless information so the child can focus on what is meaningful for a specific task. I can also work with nonverbal children by using pictograms. My four microphones allow me to understand children's answers in other directions. I, I like to think that I'm kind of the, the father of Asno. Uh, so for sure this is um, pretty moving. Uh, and also this is a, a huge source of motivation and energy because there are so many things to do. The ASPNO solution includes educational applications based on various autism approaches and models, as well as an interface system to make teachers and class requirements easier and cut down on routine paperwork. We have done a lot, I think. Uh, we faced a lot of different challenges and we have been able to overpass them, but there is still so much to do. The ASPNO solution is driving special education into the future. Are you ready to be part of it? Hi, I'm Dr. Ray Hype, and I'm from Westminster Technologies over in Ohio. Today, I want to tell you a little bit about the Ask Now robot. We call him Simon. Simon's able to work with the autistic population in inclusive classrooms from about pre-K through third grade. He's got a variety of programs that are easily downloaded and he follows instructions very well. Do you want something? Tai Chi dance. Tai Chi dance. A so, very peaceful dance. So he can do many different types of applications including exercise routines, various types of identification games, and other socially appropriate skills. I'll let him do Tai Chi first. So the teacher or the therapist has the ability to use the pre-programmed types of activities or design their own through a wireless connection. His little brain is actually a CPU stronger than any of the computers we see in our schools. So they're able to communicate directly through him, type in phrases and carry on a conversation with the students in front of them. I'm going to do something socially appropriate right now. Do you want something? Handshake. Handshake. Hello, I am very pleased to meet you. And so he gives the proper way of actually introducing oneself so those on the spectrum get a better sense of how that social interaction might be. Since he has no facial features, the children are drawn to him because they don't feel judged in any way yet we can also build upon that. Do you want something? Guess emotions. Guess emotions. This is a game now where the children would be standing in front of him and what he'll do is give various emotions non-verbally and with sounds and then give three choices to the students to guess what that Welcome emotion is. Guess emotion game. 
press my front light sensor to skip instructions. He will always give instructions to the children so they know what the rules are. Watch carefully. <sighs> Let me give you a clue. It may be joy, surprise, or fear. Well, give me your answer. Fear. Well done. Do you want to play again? No. You did a great job. It was fun to play with you. So he's also going to give feedback at any point in time so that there's a better understanding of what's going on. So we've got, again, so many different activities, but the children find him to be one of their own. University of Miami at Florida just did a study with an after school program at a local YMCA where they weren't having success with the students in getting them to do the activities. So they programmed him with Tai Chi, yoga, some exercises, and some dances. They said it was amazing. Within the first week, at four o'clock, all of the students would sit down around and wait for him to start. And then they'd go through an hour's worth of routine. When they talked to the students about it, the students said, He's a great guy, he's a great teacher. There was one little boy on the spectrum who turned around and said, he's teaching me how to dance. Speaking of dancing. Do you want something? Thriller dance. Thriller dance. Nicely done, thank you. With the teachers, when they're connecting with them wirelessly, they have the ability then to actually have documentation as to the activities that the students are doing along with the robot and document how well they've been doing to download for a digital IEP. So he's very flexible and able to do a lot of things in the classroom, not just with our students with autism, but also with those in inclusive classes too. Well, I hope you liked that presentation by Dr. Raymond Hype with Westminster Technology Incorporated. And they're going to be one of the vendors that will be participating in our Technology Expo this next year, 2015, April 23rd to be exact. And it is free to the public. We, have, um, we will provide lunch. Well, I want to thank you for joining me in the Patton's 50th episode presentation and our introduction to OFI here.